Today I'm sitting down to put together the OM System TG7 Deluxe Kit with Echo Strobe. This is a great system for beginners and anyone wanting to travel with a very compact setup. The Deluxe Kit comes with the OM System TG7 camera, the Ikelite underwater housing rated to 200 feet, the tray with quick release handle, a compact ball arm, and the Echo Fiber Strobe. The first thing I want to do is set up my camera. After you go through the camera's initialization settings, you'll want to make sure that your flash mode is set to RC, which means remote control. This will allow the camera to automatically control the output of the echo strobe for perfect exposure of your subject. Also, go ahead and set your camera to ISO 100. You can bump this up later if you happen to be shooting in a cave or a very dark setting, but this is a good starting point for most underwater photography. If you leave it on auto ISO or set a very high ISO, the camera will end up underpowering your strobe and your photos will lack color and definition. Before you dive, make sure you have a fully charged battery and a memory card installed with enough open space for a day's photo and video. Now let's put the camera aside and get the housing set up. I will put the handle on so that it's in my left hand when I use the housing. This will make it comfortable to pull the shutter trigger with my right hand. The tray and handle attaches with two washers and two screws. Make them as tight as you can with a large flat screwdriver. Now we can put the camera in the housing. Do not leave a lanyard or wrist strap attached to the camera as this could interfere with the fit or seal. Open the housing with the latch on the side by pressing the two buttons on the latch and lifting it away from the housing. Swing the back door of the housing open. Place the camera inside the housing completely and make sure it sits flat against the inner support ribs. This little tube of lubricant seems small, but it should last you a very long time if you use it properly. I keep mine in a small Ziploc bag in my luggage. Put a very small amount of lubricant on your fingers and run them along the visible surface of the O-ring and along the inner sealing surface of the housing. It should only be enough to make the O-ring shiny. Make sure that the surfaces are clean of lint, dirt, or hair before closing it up. Now, note that we're not going to put any desiccant packets in the housing as this is not recommended with the Ikelite housing. Swing the back door closed and secure it with the latch. The Echo Strobe is powered by four AA cells. I recommend a high quality rechargeable like these Eneloop Pro batteries for the best performance. Turn the battery door thumb screw counterclockwise to remove the door. There are labels inside of the battery compartment that will show you which direction to point the batteries. Now, check that the battery door o-ring and the sealing surface of the battery compartment are clean. Don't remove this o-ring from the door. It should stay in place. Also, resist the temptation to lubricate the seal. It can only make things worse for you. Since lubrication is not required, it can only serve to attract more dirt and hair to the o-ring. Now I'm going to just line the flat corner of the battery door up with the edge of the strobe body and set it in place. Notice that there are four viewing windows in the door and you can see that the O-ring shows up as a very thin black line. I'm going to slowly turn the battery door thumb screw clockwise just until that line starts to thicken. Practice this so that you know what it looks like. After it just starts to thicken, turn the thumb screw another quarter turn. The O-ring seal will now show up as a thicker solid black line. That means that it's sealed. Do not turn the thumb screw anymore. Now we need to attach our strobe to the housing. The ball mount has a little clip to prevent you from losing the diffuser. Make sure that this is pointing towards the front of the strobe. I'll use the included hex key to tighten the ball mount onto the strobe. Make sure to tighten this snugly. The diffuser was already in place and now I'll clip the two ends of the lanyard together to secure that. Now it can hang freely if I want to take it off underwater, which I rarely do. 
just pull on the side clip to release the diffuser and press it back on to snap it into place. Let's attach the rest of the arm. Loosen the wing nut on the clamp with the open end. I like to angle the plates of the clamp to make it easier to attach the strobe ball mount. I'll slide that in there and then re-tighten the clamp. Now I can attach it to my housing by pressing the quick release button on the handle and sliding the mount stem in. It'll snap into place and I can give that a quick tug to make sure it's secure. I'll usually keep my ball clamps pretty tight on the surface, but then loosen them slightly while underwater to make strobe repositioning even easier. Now all I have to do is attach the fiber optic cord, so I'll plug it into the strobe end and then plug it into either of the two ports on the housing. Let's test the system so that there are no surprises when we get underwater. You're gonna turn your camera on and then turn your strobe on to RC mode. Now take a photo. When the strobe first turns on, it will be in a learning mode. This will automatically calibrate the strobe timing to your camera's flash. Now take a second test photo and make sure that the strobe is showing up in your photos. Check out the links in the description for detailed camera setting recommendations for shooting underwater. If you need any help or advice, please reach out to us by ikelite at ikelite.com. Thanks for joining me and happy diving.